Let's explore a spiral light from AliExpress. This is probably available from other sources as well. It's powered by USB and it has a little controller in line that lets you choose the colour and the intensity. And I got this because I, I thought it'd be quite interesting to disassemble it and take a look and see how the LED tape is put into this and if it's possible to change it, even change it for different colours if you want. However, as it comes, in fact, let's cut off this little cable tie here. One day I'll just chop right through the cable when I do that. The little controller with it uh, has an on-off button. It has a colour select button, so at the moment it's uh, both the warm white and cold white, but you can select cold white, warm white, or both, uh, and then it's got intensity setting, and you can go in 10 steps in roughly... 10% increments as far as I can see. And the power consumption of this device is approximately 500 milliamps at 5 volts, so say about 2.5 watts, although not all of that will be converted into light by the LEDs. Uh, before MD asks, the I was going to say remote control, it's not really it, it's the inline control, does not store the last setting, um, so that when you turn the power off, and on again, it comes back up. Hold on, I'll just undo it. It comes up just a blue light in here, off, and then when you turn it on, it comes at full intensity of the warm and the cold white together. And it always does that. Even if you set an intensity or color and then you leave it a good length of time, just in case there's a delay before it saves it, it doesn't do that. Uh, I gave it plenty of time and then turned it off and on again. And it did not store the setting. I shall put this power supply out of the way. So we'll open this up and we'll see what the circuitry is inside. I think the base may just contain a weight. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure how the base is oh, fastened on. There's a bit of foam there. Oh, and more foam. So uh, it's not going to wait, it's just metal. And it's got a little cable restraint and it's got the uh, three wires going in, the warm white, cold white and the common positive, presumably. Right here. And that's just tucking into the end here. Is this going to come off? I don't know if there's... Oh, it's going to come off. Hold on, I'll just strip this back a bit. They have drilled a hole. Can you see that? I shall zoom down a bit and I shall shine a light into it so you can see, because it's not getting super well illuminated, uh, there is how they've put it in. It's basically just the, the wires are tacked onto the LED tape in here because it is LED tape. Just fairly stunned LED tape. Oh, let's just pull the whole lot out then. This ripple here, where they've not really stuck it in right, uh, explains the hot spot at that point. I shall zoom back out again. This is this is zoomed in far too much. Right, so uh, that's what we have. We have the plastic cover. We have an aluminium shaped channel and just standard 5 volt LED tape with one resistor per two LEDs by the look of it. Where's my little magnifying glass? 68 ohms. Don't know if you can see that. 68 ohms. Uh, yes. Right. So now we've seen what's in here and the fact that you can, technically speaking, just peel this tape out and you can put in tape of your own choice or just replenish it. If you were to find one of these that was quite stylish and perhaps a charity shop and it was like, uh, or out in the street and the LED tape had failed in it, it's not going to be too hard to change that. You also have the option of just putting in standard 12 volt tape and cutting it to a suitable length and just adding a 12 volt power supply and resurrecting a designer light. Um, I'm guessing that when they shape this, because you couldn't really grab a standard uh, aluminium extrusion like this and just twist it, I guess they must have... Uh, a wheel running inside it when they actually shape it. Dedicated machine, perhaps. Okay, let's take a look at the controller. I think this is going to spudge apart. It may not spudge apart. I'll find out when I try spudging. Is it glued or is it just very, very tight? 
It's probably, it looks like one that's held together with the little pins, as they often are. Friction pins. I guess that. Uh, there must be a name for them. I'm going to call them friction pins. What are we expecting? Is it going to be a little 8-pin chip or more? It's an 8-pin chip and a couple of transistors, the buttons in the back. OK, right. Well, I shall take a picture of this. Reverse engineer that there's not going to be an awful lot. And then we can explore it and see what we find. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. Let's zoom down a little bit in this. So there's only a couple of weird things to this. I've zoomed in far too, far too close, haven't I? Yeah, I'll zoom just a little bit out again. There's a couple of things that are weird about this. One of the, them is that uh, the on-off button, as the pin that's driving it from the microcontroller has double purpose, it also lights this blue LED. And I'm guessing that the only time since that, the only time that lights is when the unit is off. I'm guessing that it's alternating between lighting the LED and then actually pulling the button to see if it's actually been pressed or not. The other oddity here is this 10k resistor down here that is going to pin 4 of the microcontroller and that is very reminiscent of a PIC12 microcontroller because pin 4 is the master clear and also potentially programming voltage and therefore they can't use normal sort of pull-up resistors on it. So they have used an, ex an, in an external pull-up resistor on this pin. Um, there's a little filter for the power for the microcontroller and then there's two A2SHB N-channel MOSFETs leading to the output, switching to negative rail with 4.7k um, stability resistors, pull-down resistors on the gates. Quite odd, they normally use something like 10k for that, but they've used a uh, different value. Um, other than that, ultimately, other than the dual purpose of the on-off button and the LED, there's the rest of the circuitry is Two pins used for drive the MOSFETs and three pins used the other three buttons. So let's take a look at the schematic. And here is the schematic. I shall zoom in a little bit more. So there is the USB power supply coming in. And there's the positive going straight out to the LEDs. There's where it drives its, its uh, power supply for the microcontroller with a 100 ohm resistor for decoupling purposes to this capacitor just to keep it from being in influenced by any sort of noise on that rail. Um, that goes straight across the microcontroller. The two output pins to the MOSFETs have that pull-down resistor for stability and then just driven directly from the output from the microcontroller and they drive the A and the B channels of the LEDs, the code white and the warm white, um, pulling them down to the zero volt rail. And the dehumidifiers just kicked in, lovely. Um, the rest of the circuitry is basically four buttons going to the zero volt rail. This is the one that's at the master clear input, the pin four, which has its pull-up resistor, its 10k pull-up resistor. Um, the other ones have internal pull-up resistors, including this one here, but also, um, technically speaking, it's got a pull-up in the way of this uh, LED here, but that pin must be, when it's off, it must be alternating between pulling low to turn this LED on for general sort of illumination of the button area, and uh, then turn the LED off briefly and just monitoring this button to see if it's been pressed yet. And it, it's probably doing that fairly high speed, so it looks as though it reacts to the button instantly, but it is actually alternating between the blue LED and the power button. I shall add a bit of colour to that. It always looks nicer. There's the blue LED. And that's it. It's really not a complex circuit. It's uh, all this... The magic will be in the mystery microcontroller, the pick-like microcontroller, it could be a PIC microcontroller, it could be a clone of the PIC microcontroller, there are clones, or it could just be one that uh, maybe a standard 4-pin micro, 8-pin microcontroller, should I say, that they've just copied the software that was originally designed for a PIC-12. Who knows? It's a mystery. But that's it. The the interesting spiral light. Um, the construction is quite interesting. 
it's nice that you do have the option with these to pull the capping off and put new LED tape into them. Or just if you want to make something completely custom, maybe they do an RGB version of this, but you could, for instance, if you had some custom theming, you could put blue LED tape or red LED tape in just to give a, a specific colour of one of these. And you can bypass the controls, you can get rid of this if you want. And uh, the cable that's going into it, you could just basically splice on USB directly onto this and just have uh, a, just a single channel in here. But that's it. Interesting little light. It looks quite stylish and it'll certainly add a splash of illumination into the corner of a room and, and add a bit of theming and style to the room. But that's it. Interesting construction. Nice little light.